In this video guide, we'll be walking through adding fixed Windows VMs to our Chasm Workspaces deployment. We assume you already have Chasm Workspaces installed. If not, head on over to our installation walkthrough to get your deployment up and running. Now before I go into Workspaces, I first need to have a Windows VM to connect to. AWS, OCI, and other cloud providers have Windows Server 2019 and 22 available with licensing baked in. Microsoft Azure, of course, provides you with Windows 10 and 11 in addition to the server editions. You can run Windows 10 and 11 in AWS, but you will have to create your own images. I've provided a link in the description to a guide I followed to create a Windows 10 image in AWS. As this Azure pricing calculator shows, you can expect to pay as much as $134 per month for the privilege of running Microsoft Windows on this VM. Expect about the same fee on other cloud providers. You can bring your own license, of course. See your respective cloud provider for details on that. You don't have to use a cloud provider. You can use a physical server or your favorite hypervisor. But for this video, I have chosen Windows 2022 on Oracle Cloud. From within the OCI portal, navigate to Compute. Click Create Image and provide your VM with a unique name. Select Microsoft Windows as your base image. Two unique things about OCI. The first, unlike most other cloud providers, each CPU that you provide your VM is a full CPU core with two hyperthreads. On most other cloud providers, you are getting a virtual CPU that is actually a single hyperthread on a shared CPU. Another unique thing about OCI is that you can slide the CPU and RAM wherever you want it. Since this is a Windows VM, we'll go ahead and provide it with extra disk space. After a few minutes, your new Windows VM will be created with the IP address, username, and initial password displayed. Back in Chasm Workspaces, we can go ahead and add the server. Navigate to the admin dashboard. Click Compute and under that, Servers. Ensure to click Enable. Then provide a friendly name and IP address. The connection type will be RDP, which uses port 3389 by default. The username used by OCI is always OPC. Next, copy the password from the OCI portal. We'll need to change it on first login. You can have Chasm enforce a maximum number of concurrent sessions. For this initial example, we'll do one session per VM with hard-coded credentials. Each user that accesses this VM will use the hard-coded credentials here. Chasm does support single sign-on for LDAP and local Chasm accounts, which allows each user to have their own Windows account. If you are using a server edition of Windows, as in this case, you can allow multiple concurrent users per system. Let's start by demonstrating the most simple use case of a single fixed server with a single username and password used for all access by users. Later, we'll follow up with setting up single sign-on. Okay, so now we have a server defined. It is not yet accessible by users though. You need to create a workspace to share it to users. It may not seem straightforward at first, why you need to go through this additional step, but keep in mind that you can do a lot more than just share a single server, and a workspace definition is how you go about sharing anything with a user. For this simple use case, it may seem a bit redundant, but go ahead and create a new workspace of type server. Provide a friendly name, description, and an optional URL that will be displayed to the user's dashboard. Be sure to enable the workspace, and finally, provide it a category such as desktop. By default, new workspaces are automatically added to the All Users group, so after I create this, I will immediately have access to it. You can disable this behavior in Global Settings under the Image category. So there it is, my new Windows workspace. I will need to change the password on initial login. There is an optional Windows Chasm service you can install. 
It provides the user the ability to upload and download files to and from the remote desktop. It also provides a screenshot preview back on the user dashboard of Open Sessions. See our video on installing and configuring this service. Be sure to go back to the server definition and update it with the new password. This is great for individuals and small teams, but in most business-oriented environments, we will need individual Windows accounts, not shared accounts. Chasm supports two approaches to single sign-on, local Chasm user accounts and LDAP. We're gonna start with the most basic, Chasm local user accounts. I'm gonna go into the Chasm admin UI and create a user called Mike. Next, I'm going to log back into the Windows machine and create a local user called Mike with the same password. It'll try to have you use a Microsoft account, but we can just skip that and create a local account. You'll need to ensure that the new user has permissions to connect to the desktop remotely. Finally, we need to edit the username and password and the server connection details in Chasm workspaces to inform Chasm to pass through the user's credentials in the RDP connection. Replace the username with SSO underscore username in curly brackets and the password with SSO underscore cred inside curly brackets. Hit submit to save the changes. Now that everything is set up, I can log out of Chasm Workspaces as admin and log in as the new user. When I launch a session to the server, I will be logged in as Mike on the Windows server. Again, this works well for small teams, but for large environments, these Windows servers will likely be joined to Active Directory and users will be AD users. Thankfully, Chasm supports the same credential pass-through mechanism for users authenticated to Chasm via LDAP. For this demonstration, I already have an Active Directory system deployed with a domain name of chasmweb.local. The first step is to set up LDAP authentication so that users can log into Chasm using their Active Directory credentials. I have already configured LDAP settings here. See our documentation for details on the fields and examples for Active Directory and OpenLDAP. I've created an AD user with the username of Matt. With LDAP configured, I can now log in using the format username at domain name. So in this case, matt at chasmweb.local. I've created a server and workspace definition for my Active Directory server and Chasm workspaces so that I can connect to it from Chasm. The user also has access to the Windows 2022 server that we created earlier in this video. I took the liberty of adding that server to the domain. There's nothing you need to do inside of Chasm. We already configured the server to use SSO credentials. When I connect to the server from Chasm as the LDAP authenticated user, you can see that I am logged into Windows as that user.
Now we probably don't want normal users to have access to the Active Directory server. By default, Chasm adds all new workspaces you create to the All Users group. We'll log out as the user and log in as an administrator so we can change this behavior. First, let's go to the global settings and disable adding workspaces to the All Users group. Next, we will go to the All Users group and remove all the workspaces except the Windows Server 2022 and Ubuntu Focal workspaces. We want our admins to have access to the Active Directory server, so let's add that workspaces to the Administrators group. Since the user I'm logged in as is both a member of the Administrators group and the All Users group, I have access to all three workspaces. I'll log in as a normal user and confirm that I have access just to the workspaces that are in the All Users group. You can create your own groups in Chasm and map them to Active Directory groups. See our documentation for more details. So there you have it. Chasm Workspaces is now configured to manage user sessions to AD joined Windows systems. Chasm can also auto-scale Windows VMs and facilitate auto-joining them to Active Directory. We will have a follow-on video that covers auto-scaling Windows VMs in more detail. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on everything Chasm.